Hi again everybody, I'm Lonnie Bowling and this is uh, the second part of my getting started with the uh, Pi Systems SDK series. So the first one, the first part is uh, hopefully you've watched that and you've kind of got an understanding of what the SDKs are about and you have it up and working on your computer. So I'm not going to be doing a lot of slides today, but uh, what I did want to, uh, did want to um, talk about briefly is what we're going to cover. So. Um, when you're done with this uh, video, you'll be able to set up uh, default connections, um, create a project in Visual Studio, um, and uh, make a connection to the Pi system and start using that connection to do various things. So this will be real quick, simple. Hopefully you'll, uh, you'll see that it's not too difficult. I did want to note um, why I have a chance is just if you're not uh, a heavy-duty programmer and you haven't been programming uh, at all, don't worry about it. You know, this is... This is this is not uh, complicated stuff, and I think uh, you know if you've done scripting in Excel or something like that. Certainly, you know, give this a shot. Uh, don't be afraid because this is in Visual Studio that it's going to be something that uh, that's uh, that only programmers can do. I think this is this isn't anything like that. This is uh, you'll see that this is really pretty straightforward stuff. So so definitely uh, give it a try if you're if you're a little little intimidated. That's part of the purpose of these videos is I want to just show you how easy it is and, and how, um, how you can get started um, using the SDK to do the things that you might need to do. Okay, so I'm going to, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about our connections and what a default connection actually is so that we can have a better understanding when we try to connect to it. So I'm going to start up uh, our About Pi SDK and connect to, uh, connect to a Pi server that I want to use in this uh, uh, in this demonstration. So as you can tell, I, I have a bunch of Pi servers that I have access to. Um, this may or may not be the case for you. You may only have one Pi server. Um, I'm assuming that you already have your Pi server up and running and that you're, you're good to go. The important thing to do is to make sure you understand what your default server is set to. Um, and this uh, About Pi SDK utility will, will do that for us. You can see that uh, right down below when I opened it up, it told me my default server is the uh, SkyPy, and that's a, a, a virtual machine that I have set up in uh, Azure. And I had a I had a video where I did that, and um, if you're interested in doing that, check that video out. It'll like uh, get a uh, tell you how to get the security and everything set up and a, and a test system set up really quickly. Uh, so anyway, if you're not sure where your default uh, Pi system is, you can always you can, you can do a couple of things. One is you can go to File, Connections, and when you open up this box, it'll tell you right under here where your default server is. Um, and uh, you can change uh, what you want your default server to do uh, to be. is just to click on one of these and say, Set as Default Server. Now, this is the one that I want to use, and it uh, doesn't have that option because it is the default server, so I'm going to go ahead and just check my connection make sure that I'm connected there and I am a connected connected in as an administrator so that's the first thing is make sure you um, you're clear about what your default connection is okay um, so uh, let's open up the documentation really quickly and just take a look at uh, at what we might um, you know if we if we didn't know where we needed to go at this point what would be uh, what would be where would we look in the documentation to find out uh, the information uh, so here's this uh, this page that I talked about in the first part, this Pi SDK equivalence, and down here we're interested in our Pi servers here, and so here you can see there's a server and servers, and it's pointing us to the different parts of what the SDK is about. So we're dealing with a group of servers right now, so I think servers with a, a plural is probably going to be something that we want to um, take a look at. So I'm going to click over here. And this is standard setup for how the Pi SDK works. And what you see is you see the servers, and then under servers, there's uh, you can grab a server, and then from there, you have various things like this uh, this collective. You can do some stuff with the collective. You have these point classes, point lists, and uh, this interface for time time source. So, um, what I'm really interested in is what is the Pi servers class doing for me. And it says here, right at the very top, that it's a global collection of Pi server objects maintained by the Pi server directory service represents uh, 
represents the known servers available from a workstation or client application. So the known servers available is what we're seeing in this AboutPy uh, SDK utility here. We can see we have four of them. Okay, so this is how we're going to access that. Um, it's good to scroll down, take a look at the remarks area. Sometimes there's some really good information in here. And then finally, um, in some cases, they actually give you an example of how to how to go about and connect to it in both Visual Basic and C Sharp. Uh, I I like to come over to the members and I like to look at this. This is this gives me a kind of um, an idea of all the things that I could do. Like I could see I could add a server actually. If it did, if it wasn't on the client machine already, I could I could create code to do that. Um, and there's uh, uh, things like counts, you know, and this default Pi server. Now this is something that we're we're going to do. So um, I could see the default Pi server configured in the Pi server directory services, and that's what we're configuring with in the about Pi SDK. So we're going to be taking a look at this. This tells you how to use it, and uh, it comes down here. And uh, some more remarks. Uh, this property returns the default Pi server. So this is uh, so this is what we want to do. We want to grab this uh, default Pi server. So let's go ahead and get a project going and see if we can grab it and connect. Okay. So uh, I already have a Visual Studio open. I'm going to go to new new project, and we'll call this uh, AFSDK demo one. And uh, Go ahead and start that up. And uh, yeah, okay. Let me see. Okay. So, okay. So here's here's our project. Let me. Um, this is just a, a simple console application so that we can run it. Uh, one of the things I like to do with a console application is to go uh, is to uh, do a console. Uh, read key and what that's going to do is it's just if I uh, run this F5 it'll open up a, a console and it'll keep it open until I hit a key. Alright so I want to go into references over here and I want to add a reference and uh, I want to look at the assemblies that are available and the quickest way is just to do a search an OSI search and you'll see all the um, libraries that are installed on my computer. Um, you can see this this one right here. This is the um, the um, older Pi SDK that's based on COM, and uh, here is the uh, newer AF SDK. And there's a couple of different versions. There's a there's a version two and a version four. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit more at some point in the video, but I don't want to I don't want to throw too much information at you at once. So we're just going to use this uh, latest version four, and I'll check that and say okay, and. Uh, Version 4 works against a .NET Framework 4.0 or higher, and at the time of this video, .NET 4.5 is the um, current framework that's out. So this, this framework will uh, work very well with um, the AS, AF SDK 4.0. Um, so here we can see that we have it in here, and uh, we know that in our documentation, uh, we want to look at the um, Pi servers class. Uh, we should have some class like that. Now, um, if you're familiar with .NET, you'll know that uh, if you if you type in something and uh, we want to see it green like this, if it's something that's uh, supposed to be part of our library. And so here we don't. So I'm going to just right click on this Pi servers. I'm going to resolve, and it's going to bring in the right namespace for us. This is OSIsoft.af.pi, and you can see it added up here to the using statements. And now we have a nice green. Uh, Pi servers, which just means we're actually using this Pi servers class as part of our um, our AFSDK uh, class library. Um, in the documentation, you can see here this is the Pi servers class, and up here you can see the namespace is OSIsoft.af.pi. Now I could have just typed in a using statement automatically if I wanted to at the top, or, or manually if I wanted to at the top of my project. Um, but you know, uh, I like to just do a right click and do a resolve. That usually is, a, for me, simplest way. So we want to get that known uh, that known list of Pi servers. So let's go ahead 
and uh, create a pi servers object and I want to make that equal to new and uh, in IntelliSense you can see pi servers comes up and I'm going to do that and um, that should really bring up a list of servers so if we wanted to um, look at that we could just do something like uh, uh, for each and we could do a var um, pi server or we could call this uh, server um, in uh, pi servers and that's going to uh, that will bring up uh, our collection and then we could print those out we could do a uh, um, we could just do a right line and uh, we could say um, we could do something like uh, um, uh, we could just uh, server and we could uh, do this and, and uh, there and then let's do uh, server dot uh, let's see yeah, server dot name. And let's see if that compiles for us. Uh, it's like a type, but it's a variable. So by servers dot, um, let me get the right pi servers. Okay. And let's see how that works. Okay, that looks good. We could run this, and we're just going to loop through, and you can see that there's our four servers. Now we want to get a hold of this default server and we want to connect to it so let's do that and uh, that is uh, really pretty simple. This is going to be a uh, we want to use this default connection. Let's look at uh, our AF go back to here and we can see the default pi server property is uh, is going to return a pi server. Okay, so this is now we're at this point under a pi server, and the pi server object represents a single pi data archive. This is going to connect us to what to the part of the pi system where the data is stored. This is what the old pi SDK used to do for us. All right, so from there, all we need to do is uh, just come in and let's do a pi server single. And we can call this uh, a pi server equals new. Um, actually, not new. We want to just get it from the existing pi server. And then we can say we can get a, um, let's see, default. Default pi server right here. It's a property, so we're not going to put parentheses after it. And um, if we want to, then we could do a console um, right line, and we could just say default server, and we can do the same thing. Um, and this is going to be our pi uh, server dot name. Okay. And we can take a look at that. And so here we can see there's our default pi server, skypy.cloudapp.net. Pretty simple, right? So the last thing I want to do is uh, let's go ahead and just do a connect and disconnect. Um, and that is very, very simple. All we do is we come up to our pi server and we just do a connect and uh, there's a bunch of overloads with connect. We can pass in credentials and things like that, which is probably going to be uh, something that you might want to um, do in a, in, a, in a real application. There's a connect with property, but we're just going to do a basic connect. And then, um, and then when we're done, we want to do a pi server uh, disconnect. Okay. And uh, now in between here, we would um, do something. Uh, with the system pi um, data yeah pi system okay all right so let's just see let's just uh, I'm gonna set up some breakpoints here and let's just see if we actually are able to connect and so I'm gonna F10 
And if we were successfully connected, then uh, we're, we would have, um, if we did not connect, we would throw an error. But in this case, we did connect. So, um, and now we're able to disconnect. And that is, uh, that is basically, um, you know, what it, what it takes to connect and disconnect to the default Pi server. So that's great. That gets you um, kind of along the way uh, as, as far as getting, getting connected to the system. In this next part, um, I'm going to take this example and we're going to go further with this and we'll go ahead and start uh, getting some Pi points and we'll look at some of the Pi data. All right. So uh, hopefully this was of help and you could see that, you know, that really wasn't that hard. Right. And I think that, uh, that uh, most of us could handle that if we're interested in doing programming. So I'm Lonnie Bowling. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next part. Thanks. See you later.